Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business uh, with Michael Hausman, who is the uh, founder of Rapport Boost. Welcome, Michael. Oh, thanks, Greg. Uh, so, Michael, you're in the business of HR analytics, and um, uh, you were involved with a company called Evolve, which was later acquired by Cornerstone uh, On Demand. Um, and you guys had done quite a good job of uh, identifying the kinds of employees that employers are looking for using what we might think of as basic analytics. Um, how has that business changed in the years that you've been involved in it with respect to the application of analytics, primarily for uh, recruitment and retention? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest change was that when we started, it was a selection-only tool, and we were really focused on one element of the employee life cycle, and that was just bringing in the right talent, right? Evaluating this big pool of applicants and making sure that we surfaced those that were best suited for the job. Over time, what we realized is that that was just one piece of the puzzle, and that there are decisions made in training, in supervising, in coaching people. Um, all of those things had an equal, if not greater, impact on their success in the role. And so the biggest change I saw, and, and I think I contributed to, was a, a developing an additional product in addition, in addition to the selection suite that was focused on optimizing decision making around all of those other elements of the employee life cycle and really guiding them from entry to exit and making sure we were making the right decisions at every point in time. Now, in order to apply analytics to the employee life cycle, you have to have uh, those features, right, in your system. You have to have them uh, collected and you have to have them tagged and assigned to the right workers. And uh, a lot of the legacy um, employee uh, software doesn't tag just the things that you're looking for and collect the features you're interested in. So uh, how have companies changed the sorts of things that they keep track of and the sorts of things that they, they collect? Uh, and um, are analytics companies helping them to think more about that data collection? Um, yeah, so the, to your first question, it's a real challenge. I would say for what we did, the modeling was not nearly as difficult as data integration and capturing the right data and then validating it, doing QA, making sure you were comparing apples to apples. That was probably the hardest part of the business. The good news is that companies and vendors have gotten better and better about their data warehouses and making those more accessible via APIs and also making sure that the data is that's being tracked is the data you would want to track. Um, in addition to that, companies are getting a little bit more creative about how they pull from one vendor and pull different components from another vendor, right? They're becoming a little bit more interchangeable and willing to play together. And so because of that, it became easier over time. It was, it was still a challenge, and I will say it was probably the biggest struggle for our business, but data integration and ETL, that became easier over time, and especially because once you integrated with all the big players like SuccessFactors and Taleo and Workday, you tended to see them over and over again, right? And so it wasn't like building from scratch. And a lot of people are talking about the digital transformation of the workplace and how uh, a lot of the activity that a typical employee spends a lot of time on is essentially going to be automatable or um, they can be replaced by machine learning, by uh, artificial intelligence. Um, everything from surgeons all the way down to postal workers. Uh, how do you see that playing out? Because there are people that, that say everyone's going to be unemployed and nobody's going to have anything to do, and then there are others that are saying, thank God I can get rid of all this tediousness and I can focus on the things that I'm really good at. Um, with Rapport Boost, you're, you're working a lot on that interface. How could you, uh, how, do you, how do you think that's going to play out? There's a long road ahead. I think I've, I read all these articles saying that humans are going to be out of jobs. 50% of employees are just going to lose their jobs magically to robots overnight. I don't think that's going to happen, overnight at least. I think it's going to be a long road. And for us, we don't think it's an either or. We think that as evidenced by the experience at Evolve, humans, when they are empowered through the use of machine learning and data science, they become better at their jobs. And so we're really focused on improving that interaction and that collaboration. And in our case, helping frontline agents and brand ambassadors engage, in, engage with customers, but doing it the right way by providing them information about personality and how to engage and how to, you know, what language and what tone to use and all of those components. So to your original question, I do think that a lot of jobs that can be automatable will ultimately, especially frontline customer service and sales roles, I think bots are going are to take over a lot of those. But I think there's going to be a long period where we as humans ultimately work with the machines and we train those machines and we make them better and better. And I think that frees us up 
to do things that humans are uniquely suited to do, like creative pursuits, right? Managing and leading. These are things that robots, I don't think, are going to be able to handle anytime soon. Do you think that's going to change uh, the kind of education that we need to provide for our employees? Um, in other words, are they going to have to be continually retraining uh, with a much shorter um, educational cycle than we've seen in the past where you simply go to school, you learn a few skills, and then you amortize it over 40 years? I actually do think that that's the case. I don't know if you know, you'll necessarily, as a lawyer, have to go back to school every couple years, but things are changing, and I think to be the best at you, what you do in any pursuit, you need to understand how you can effectively interface with machines to do your job better. And as an example, as a data scientist, I have to go to conferences, and I'm sure you do the same, you have to go to conferences pretty regularly to stay on top of what is the the latest and greatest, right? And there are all these tools that are emerging to make my job easier, which is great. I don't have to worry as much about data cleaning and, and compiling and aggregation. I can think more about what are the new techniques and tools that are becoming available that make my job better and allow me to do the stuff that I truly love doing. Okay, well, we look forward to the day when, when the robots take over yeah. most of what we're currently doing. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Michael, for coming in. Yeah, thank you, Greg. <laughs>